massive hot boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot like fire. Three minutes after the hour of six o'clock. Citizens of the Republic. It was some few days ago, several weeks ago, a former Express investigative reporter, Anika Gums. Tendered her resignation. And she put pen to paper and addressed the letter of resignation to Umati Lida of the Express newspapers. I want the citizens of TNT to listen very carefully to what I'm about to read. The leader of the opposition, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, recently came to the public and told the public that the letter was properly crafted. In the mind of Gladiator, I don't accept that as an excuse. It is a cop-out. As leader of the PNM party, and as leader of the opposition, we ought to come forward and clear the air with regards to Anika Gums. You mount a platform and you told the nation that the letter was another attempt to demonize you and to slander you. You retained some of the best attorneys at law in the land of TNT. One can recall Reginald Armour represented you in a matter before the High Court. Senior Counsel Reginald Armour. And one can also recall that currently, you have Douglas Mendes, Senior Counsel. You have Faris Alwari. You have Michael Kwamina. And several senior counsels and attorneys at law backing you and prepared to defend you. Yes, you, Dr. Rowley. For the sake of the listening public, many of you have been trying and waited with bated breath to listen to the program this evening to hear yours truly the gladiator venture into the letter. And myself and Barry Garcia, we will try our best to understand this letter. According to Anika Gums, Anika Gums, she stated, Dear Miss Lider, I regret to inform you that I hereby tender my resignation with immediate effect. Full stop. 
My decision to do so is not an easy task. Full stop. However, in upholding the high standard of journalism and to avoid the express newspapers from being brought into dispute, I have opted to sever all ties with the company. I apologize for the delay in not submitting a written report to you surrounding an incident that occurred in April 2015. At the time, I thought it would have been in my best interest to not to do so. However, to avoid my character and reputation from being tarnished, I am forced to reiterate the facts of the incident as previously discussed with you. the 21st 2015 I was at the St. Joseph police station where I was in the process of making a report regarding 11 prank calls I received on April the 20th while at the police station I received a telephone call around midday from opposition leader, Dr. Keith Rowley. Hmm. That's all I say. Hmm. Dr. Keith Rowley indicated he was in possession of some additional information relating to an article. I had written an ask that I visit his private residence in West Trinidad since he was not at his office, full stop. Upon receiving, no, upon arriving at his residence, I met two men, one of whom asked my name. I was told by one of the men that Dr. Rowley was expecting me and I was escorted to the front door full stop when I entered the home I was greeted by Dr. Rowley whom I was astonished to see was bare back full stop I thought this was this to be most inappropriate I was too embarrassed to comment on this given is going up to the hour of 7 o'clock and let me continue from whence I left out and I'm going to read over a particular paragraph when I entered the home I was greeted by Dr. Rowley whom I was astonished to see he was bareback I thought, although I thought this to be most inappropriate, I was too embarrassed to comment on this given the office that Dr. Rowley holds. Dr. Rowley then invited me to sit at his kitchen counter 
where he made certain written information available to me relating to a news article. During the conversation about the information, I receive a telephone call from the police station from an officer who inquired about this specific time. I received the prank calls. Being privy to the conversation, Dr. Rowley inquired if something was wrong. Full stop. I casually told him about the 11 phone calls I received the previous night. Full stop. To my shock and surprise, Dr. Rowley said, would you hire me to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? Dr. Rowley again repeated the question to me. Would you hire me to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? did not respond. I immediately went numb and blank. I felt completely helpless and confused as if I was being trapped in a situation that I was totally unprepared for. All oh, Dr. Rowley continued speaking for a while. I was totally disconnected mentally. Shortly after, Dr. Rowley, who was bare back, walked me out of his home to the front gate, and I left in my vehicle full stop. As you, re as you may recall, I first discussed the matter with you. On May the 5th, without naming Dr. Rowley. During that conversation, I opted to refer to Dr. Rowley as an official full step. When asked by you if I told the official that he was inappropriately dressed, I admitted to remaining silent because I felt uncomfortable and embarrassed to do so full stop I also admitted to not immediately leaving the premises I also said that while the comment would you hire me to be a bodyguard outside your bedroom? Was made, made me uncomfortable. I did not respond and I've explained to you why. Asked by you if it was the first time I visited the home of the official. I admitted that I visited the home on April the 9th 
where information relating to the same news article was also given. On that occasion, I said to you that after I collected the information and was walking out of his home, the official touched my back and asked if I had a tattoo of a map on it. I said to you that while I was caught off guard, I told the official that my tattoo on my back was not a map, but a butterfly. Additionally, I told you, the official then asked me the meaning of the butterfly tattoo. To which I replied, it was all part of being chick. by you what I was wearing I replied it was one of my wool dresses that I wore previously to attend our weekly Tuesday meetings I also indicated that when the official walked to me walked me to the front of his home a bee landed on my dress. I admitted that the official removed remove the B of my dress and said, Even honey, bees landing on you. That the entire incident prompted me to shelve all my work dresses and I explained the recent change in my professional wardrobe and I've opted to wear only pantsuits while on duty. I also indicated to you that in January at the end of an interview at the Port of Spain office of the official he inquired whether I had recently returned from vacation. I said to you that I told the official that I was on leave, to which he replied, You are looking rosy. However, I admitted to you that though the previous remarks by the official made me uncomfortable, I dismissed them mentally and continued to communicate with him until April the 21st because of the office he holds. again was discussed on May the 19th where you recommended that I utilize the employee assistance program by elder and associates and advised me to meet only in public places to avoid being harmed. I attended sessions on May the 25th, June the 2nd and the 8th during the period of counseling, even though I asked by you to identify the official, I opted not to because of the office rules. I 
adopted to withhold his name from you until recently because of the office Dr. Rowley holds. I also delayed submitting a formal report to you on the matter for that same reason. However, I have noted your comments during our conversation where you indicated that the situation compri compromise may be cause it could be construed that the information was being given in exchange for personal relations. It should be noted that in spite of such bizarre development, I held my ground, remained focused and achieved my objectives and was able to escape an unknown side of this individual. The situation in which I found myself, while unfortunate, was totally unexpected. On reflection, I now feel unable to communicate with Dr. Rowley any longer because he betrayed my trust and expectation. Over the 17 years, I have conducted my job impartially without fear or favor, regardless of political parties, sex, or interests involved. The unfortunate experience have left me mentally scarred and traumatized. As a woman, I felt frightened and disrespected because of the compromising situation I unexpectedly found myself. I remain shocked that Dr. Rowley, a political leader, a husband, a father and grandfather, a man who I held in such high regards, could have acted in such an inappropriate manner and uttered such suggestive words to me. Developments over the last 72 hours have caused me great distress to my personal and professional life, hence my decision to walk away. I thank you for your support and ensuring that I receive counseling to handle similar unfortunate situations. I may encounter in my future endeavors. Yours respectfully, Anika Gums, Carbon Copy, General Manager Douglas Wilson, Carbon Copy, One Caribbean Media Limited Board of Directors. Here. I wonder if you detect anything in this letter. I wonder if the listening public outside there gather any information from this. First, I must say this letter speaks the truth. There's nothing defamatory. There's nothing slanderous of this letter. Libelous. Eh? Nothing libelous either. Nothing libelous at all. Right. 
First part of that letter that have me concerned. Why would you invite her to your home if you have information? Why did you call her and invite her to your home? Why did you not invite her to the office of the opposition leader? Barry, Barry, Barry. Is it a habit of you to have female journalists come to your home when your wife is not there? Is it a habit of yours to invite other female individuals at your home when your wife is not present? Ricardo Welch and Trinidad and Tobago. There are a number of questions you could ask about that particular incident. Is it that Dr. Rowley is comfortable with invited female guests to his home when his wife is not around? Why would he invite this young female journalist to his home to have a conversation with her and give her pertinent information to a story that she's investigating? Why not the office of the opposition leader? Because he's a high official in the country. You're accustomed to having press conference at the office of the opposition leader where you invite members of the media to come and have a conversation. Now, I am going to give you my understanding of this letter. You know. After you finish, I'm going to I, give you... I am, I am very much concerned. Is this a habit of yours to be invited female journalists to your home when your wife is not there? You see, Ricardo, understanding the office that you hold, understanding that there are certain errors you do not make because it can put your career in jeopardy. Why would he make such an unforced error if he if he's not comfortable? And if it's not a habit of his that inviting female personnel to his home when his wife Sharon is not present. That is the first question you have to answer. Because, because we are asking questions. Yes. We do not know. And we are trying to understand. Now that we know that the leader of the opposition stated, Dr. Rowley stated, that he cannot sue the girl. Because there is nothing inflammatory or libelous. He said it is in the form of a witness statement. And a witness statement takes the form of an affidavit. And an affidavit takes the form of a truthful document, an extremely truthful document. And, then, and as long as the information is factual, it is not defamatory. Well, and I have been saying that again. And here yes. are the two questions I asked outside of Dr. Rowley, outside of Anika Gums. Why, if the article was not truthful, why would the Express put their company in jeopardy? by printing out a truthful document, knowing it can hurt the reputation of the company and that the plaintiff, Dr. Rowley, could gain millions of dollars from them for printing an untruthful, libelous, inflammatory doctorate, document. Why would the Express do that? If they knew that this story was not truthful, they would not have printed it. Then why would the Omati Lider sought it necessary and taught it necessary to send a young lady for counseling if this incident did not take place. And those are pertinent questions that needs to be answered. Regardless of what side of the coin you are on, regardless of how you feel about me or Gladiator, regardless of how you feel about Dr. Rowley, whether you love him, you hate him, or you dislike him or what, that is not a question, that is not a question we're asking here, you know. We are asking questions pertaining to an international reputably communication company called the Express newspaper. Why would the Express print this document if this document was not truthful? Knowing well, knowingly well, that they can be sued and it can hurt the reputation of the company. Gladiator. Now, In this letter, Barry Garcia, I'm going to try to apply forensic investigation and analysis in this letter here. There are many 
things in this letter that are untold of. Many things in this letter. Here I'm starting off. <laughs> Upon reading this letter, Anika Gums have withheld many other information that she chose not to disclose. At this point in time. At this point in time in this letter. So what you are saying actually, there is more that really happened than what she's saying. You yeah, wait no man, wait no man. You give your you had your time. Let me talk. All right, brother. Okay, brother. Let me talk. Okay, brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, brother. Yeah. I you have to apologize, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Let me talk. Now, Barry Garcia. The day before Anika comes. Received the call. No, she received the call. minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Yes, as I stated before the break, I said for the sake of the listening public, yours should be glad that you have to engage in forensic analysis of this letter here. Upon reading this letter, Anika Gums is complaining that she received 11 prank calls. I am deeply concerned as to who, as to who is the person behind those prank calls. I am deeply concerned because the prank calls took place the day on the 20th of April the prank calls took place and I recall my good friend Tunapuna Gladiator she received numerous prank calls and at times she used to call on the radio station and said and complain about the prank calls and reading this letter here this person made a lot of prank calls the day before and Anika Gums have left out so many things in it. The possibility is that she may have answered one of the prank calls and told and mentioned the prank calls. You see this? I can't take it no more. I am going to the police station to complain about these prank calls. So they investigate whosoever you are to find out where that prank call is coming from. But that, we don't know. Pan calls. Here it is. Now we do not know who are the person, or who is the person behind the pan calls. Eh? We only going by the letter here. The same day she was making the report. And why is she making the report to the police? The St. Joseph Police Station, she received a call from Dr. Keith Rowley. Okay. What a coincidence. Well, I don't believe in coincidence. Eh? 
What a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. But we don't know. We're just I'm, asking questions. But I'm trying to connect. The radiator is only applying forensic analysis. analysis. Forgive me, people. If I'm going too deep, just tell me when to stop. I'm telling you, Barry, this lady have a lot to say. Have a lot to say. But let us continue. Dr. Rowley told the goodly lady while she was at the police station, that means interrupt her while she didn't report because, hey, is the leader of the opposition calling me? Yes, so what's the problem? I have some more information to, to give you concerning the article. She, was, she stopped what she was doing because he said, come to my residence. Now, the legitimate expectation of Anika comes is that when she comes there is to discuss issues relevant to the newspaper article. And one would expect, via the legitimate expectation, that when she goes there, she wouldn't encounter Dr. Rowley in her jaws or Dr. Rowley bear back, according to the document here. The document states that when she went there, she was astonished, she was shocked, taken aback to see Dr. Rowley bear back. I would feel as a man who is a husband to a wife would dress appropriately if you having or expecting guests. But this is this is the part that boggles my mind, Gladiator. If you are expecting, expecting guests, guests, why would you be so inappropriate? I am saying that if you are expecting guests. For that matter, anybody who expecting guests at their residence, they wouldn't come out in a underpants or a jaws, and they wouldn't come out and confront their guests bare back. They might at least put on some kind of jersey, some kind of, they put on something. Even if it's a vest, even if you have a short pants, they would put on something overall, you know? Not show your big belly or your flat belly or all your chest and all the hair and all. They would not do that at all. They're going to put on something. They don't have to put on no shirt and tie. You already home? Put on a little old jersey. If you just grab a jersey and put on a old jersey. So it will shock and confuse Anika Gums. But because of the office that holds she choose not to walk out immediately but look to focus on what she came there for let me say that you lady young people she let fly but my main concern again as I go through this letter here Barry why would you continue to be bareback in other words then okay she come and she met you bareback all you simply say, and yeah, I was doing something, and let me just go and put on something in. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be appropriate? Of course. Wouldn't that be appropriate? Of course. And I'm sure if Sharon Rowley was there, she would be appalled to see her husband expecting guests to be bare back because Sharon Rowley is a decent lady. And she would tell her husband, no, 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 no. Come put on something. You see, we have, we have somebody by the gate there. You can't go. You cannot be looking like that. Come here. Put on that jersey. In a nice kind of way. You don't feel that she will do that? Of course. If she was there? Of course. Hmm. But Anika Gums did not tell her whether, tell the nation, or tell uh, Omati Lida in the letter whether Sean Rowley was there or not. We have to assume... That Sharon Rowley was not there. But not only assume, we can safely say she wasn't there because Miss Sharon Rowley has not come in defense of her husband and said that is not that never took place. Mm. Sharon Rowley is yet to say 
that what Anika Gum Sandy Ford printed here is not true. No, well, but Barry, let's not beat around the bush. Charles Rowley's a No, no, no but, but, but let's not beat around the bush. Dr. Rowley have come to the public already and said that he cannot sue for that. That means everything that is mentioned here. Is it truth? Is it truth? Is it God's truth? Is it gospel truth? Anika Gums is not lying. Now, the goodly lady, Anika Gums, she said, I was too embarrassed to comment on this given the office that Dr. Rowley holds. That means she have a great amount of respect for Dr. Rowley. Barry? Mm-hmm. But what is confused, what is puzzling Gladiator's mind? What is building questions to my mind? Is the first statement. You be a back. Why should a hard back man be a back man? Upon hearing Anika Gums complain, because she said while she was there by the the counter, kitchen counter, kitchen which he invited counter. her. Yes, to. yes. He invited her to the kitchen counter. counter. I mean to say. Normally, if a person invites you to invite you to the lounge or to the uh, living room, you need to sit down there and whatnot because I have pictures of Rowley being interviewed at his residence and in those pictures, he was not bare back at all. I have it. Here it is Why she was there, Barry Garcia. She got a call from the police officer. And here it is, Dr. Rowley inquired if something was wrong. So that means while the discussion taking place, ring, 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 she answered. Yes, officer. Yes, it's 11 prank calls I get last, uh, last night. And, and I told the person I don't like it at all. Why are you calling him? And then, like, she, she related to the officer what transpired the day before. Now, we have to bear in mind, she received prank calls the day before Dr. Rowley called her while she was at the police station. And we are saying that we do not know who is the individual or individuals behind the prank calls. We don't know. But so far, Dr. Rowley has not denied that the information here is untrue. Because in his presence, she told Dr. Rowley she received 11 prank calls. And if a lady who's concerned about her life, who is traumatized by those prank calls, is relating to you, this is what happened to me just yesterday. What could came could come to your mind while being bare back? Not saying, oh, oh, you know, I forget I was bare back. Let me go and put on a, a jersey. Let me go and put on a thing. But why she relate the matter to you and tell you about the prank calls? You went on and shock and confuse Anika Gums. And you will ask the girl, Do you want me to be my bodyguard? Would you hire me to, to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? No, 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 no. we had to take our time. How would Dr. Rowley go say that? But let me see. Let me see if I could try it. Let me see if I could try it. <laughs> Hannah, you, you want to hire me to be your bodyguard outside the bedroom? Nah, I don't think that. Nah. Nah, nah, you don't sit. Nah, you go down. You ain't all that rough at all. You go down gracefully with that one. You ain't go. You ain't gonna be all that rough at all. Would you like me to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? You be graceful with that one. Nah, because he's, he, he wants to be sexy and seductive. 
Now nah, we, we cannot we cannot jump to that conclusion. Well then, how is he will accept? No, you remember he's a rough person, you know? Uh, he's a macho man. Yeah, but macho man knows how to be seductive with, with, their, with, their, with their calls. Well, we go try it in the macho way and we go to try it in the yeah. nice seductive way. Or oh, you can see, right? Um, I as a yeah, person no, no, be she, back she, in my house and, and I... She's saying... Uh, she's saying... Oh, you want to know what, what, yes, they, they, they called, somebody keep calling my phone all the time, and, and I told them, look, I ain't able to sing at all, I will report them, so whenever I get a call, and the person talk, was singing horny, and singing, singing, and then groaning, and moaning, I say, here is now, I'm getting fed up with these calls, I'm going to report it to the police station tomorrow. You get to find out what was the old problem. And here where you go put it. Hmm. And they take a deep breath. Hmm. Would you like to hire me to be a bodyguard outside your bedroom? <laughs> I wonder if I say goodbye. <laughs> no, no, I'm try it another way. <laughs> Man, you can, let me take off your mic. You can't be laughing while I'm talking here, man. Yeah. Would you hire... Uh, no, 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 no. That's too rough. Uh, slap my face. Right. Let me try to, let me try to talk in nice. I, I try, you see, Barry, I try to think of a way if Dr. Raoli was to talk sweet and nice, how we will talk. Here yeah, nah. now. Would you hire me to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? How I talk to you? That sounds like him. <laughs> yeah, let me try. Let me let me try that one. Hannah. Hannah. Would you hire me to be your bodyguard outside your bedroom? Oh, you play a song like him? You make me laugh too much, my God. <laughs> Because you know you have a kind of husky voice. Yeah, nah. Oh, oh. It's prank calls you, you receive. Would you hire me to be a bodyguard outside the bedroom? And bear in mind, Barry Garcia, he is bareback while making that statement. He is bare back. And why would he want to repeat the same question, seeing that the lady felt uncomfortable with the statement? Because you must know facial expression of a lady. Because she said she was shocked and uncomfortable. Precisely. Would a person want to repeat the statement? In a rose barry. You're making a move on a woman. And you know, you make a statement, you know, a seductive statement. And you see the woman give a kind of a cold face. Yeah, like it was a fly that passed and married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her. So it's a buzz off. Yeah. Would you repeat the same thing again? No. That is harassment. Not only you won't repeat it, you will try to see if you could minus yourself from her presence quickly. Quickly, you're going to make up something and like excuse one time. Yes, and say, I'll check you back. And you're going with that. The moment, the moment, the moment. you see certain signs, you cut that, sh that, that talk short. Precisely. Find some kind of way to get out of this whole thing. Understand? From the time you see a kind of cold shoulder, what have you, get out of it. Anyway, we are only asking questions and we are applying forensic analysis. Yes. Let's 
continue with the letter. When he asked the question again, she said she immediately, immediately went numb and blank. That is what the girl is saying, and what she's saying is gospel truth. She went numb and blank. And she said that I felt completely helpless, confused, as if I was being trapped in a situation that I, I was totally unprepared for. Hmm. Being trapped in a situation? What message is she sending to the to Umuti Lider? Something is more. How does it, it have more in the mortar beside the pestle? Uh, it, it have plenty more. Plenty in more to this thing because she it, said she said she, she, because he she made said that she, she, she was she felt trapped. Trap, yeah. Is it that Umati Lydon knew that this was going to take place? Four minutes going up to the hour of eight o'clock. And I'm trying to give a forensic analysis of this letter and trying to decipher the unwritten words and from that which is written. In my assessment, many things have not been told in this letter. But let me continue. Anika Gums said she felt uncomfortable and embarrassed because she felt that Dr. Rowley was inappropriately dressed. I want to agree with her on that. I want to agree with Anika Gums that Dr. Kid Rowley was inappropriately dressed. And if you are inappropriately dressed, why would you Make such a statement to a person who is traumatized by prank calls. It's not that you did not know, but you overheard the discussion with Anika Gums and the police officer that called her on that day. But let's continue. So that statement is statement number one. Anika Gums gave another date in which she visited the home of Dr. Keith Rowley. And that was April the 9th. Citizens of the Republic, my observation, how is it that on those days, Sharon Rowley, or the wife of Dr. Keith Rowley, is not there? was not there on the 21st and she was not there on the 9th now mind you 
it is now clear and official that this letter is not lying or making up any lie against Dr. Kid Rowley. It is speaking the gospel truth because we heard it from the horse's mouth. We heard it from Dr. Kid Rowley himself that he cannot take any legal action against the letter or take any legal action against Anika Gams. The same Anika Gams. Hmm. She complains that on the 9th of April, Dr. Keith Rowley touched her on her back. That is inappropriate. And Dr. Keith Rowley is going to agree with me with all the attorneys at law that he has. One, Anika Gums is not your wife. She's not your girlfriend. She's not your daughter. Why would you want to take the chance to touch Anika Gums on her back? What make you feel that by seeing a tattoo on the back of Anika Gums give you the authority to touch her on her back. For what reason? For what reason you would choose to touch her on her back? For what reason? Now, I'm trying to understand. For what reason? And you see, people, I am just only applying forensic reasoning, analysis. Now you want to be Prime Minister of the Republic. You want to be Prime Minister of the Republic. And you will see a tattoo on a woman's back. Which she deems to be chick, meaning stylish, is a fashion. But still venture to take your hands and touch her on her back. That is inappropriate. Touch the lady on her back on the 9th of April. I mean, but why every time she goes there, there's some incident happening? Why some kind of incident is happening? And Dr. Rowley's wife is not there. But we're going according to the letter. That's what the letter is saying. In which Anika Gums have not received any pre-action protocol letter for. It's a fact. But let's go more into the letter. From the start to the end, on the 21st 
of April, you remain bare back right through the presence of Anika Gums. Also, his wife was not there on that day. Then on the second occasion, your wife not there, but you've vet. <laughs> <laughs> let me say, let me say good afternoon to Imam Yasin Abu Bakr. No, no, I gotta put on the mic here. <laughs> good, uh, good, good, good afternoon, Imam Yasin Abu Bakr. Who make you bold, Tini? No, what, what I'm doing, I'm Imam. I mean, you know, Barry, you know, both of us born on the same day. Yes, I know that. Yeah. It is now, October. What happened? I have, the let, I have the letter here. Imam. Right. And I'm trying to apply forensic analysis. Right. And what I'm saying, Imam, the lady received prank calls, 11 prank calls. And you know, many of us would have received prank calls, but you received prank calls the day before Dr. Rowley called you. And as if a woman, if a woman receiving prank calls, she must say, look, again, so and so fed up, who is you? Who is you? I will tell the police, I'm going to the police. But while she at the police station, she get a call from Dr. Dr. Rowley. Rowley. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And because Dr. Rowley, Imam, have stated that she is telling the truth. Because he said that all the attorneys he have cannot find anything in the arm statement here to sue her for slander or defamation. But my concern is, why on the 21st of April your wife was not there? But you be her back. You know that she is coming. You're expecting her. She, on the other hand, has the legitimate expectation that she's going to see Dr. Rowley in full gear. Your home, maybe a short pants and a jersey, what have you. Or if she come and says, oh gosh, look, she already, oh God, I thought I just called she, she here already. Let me run in the bedroom and put on some kind of vest or some kind of thing. But you greeted her beer back. And from the start to the end, you remain beer back. And then in a seductive thing, you see, when she tell you about the prank call, you know, you hire me to be a bodyguard outside the bedroom? I mean, they say something wrong there, Imam. Imam, what are your thoughts of that? No, I want the Imam coming. This as yet. I am conscious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. A man could be alive yeah. and 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 not thinking as if he's unconscious. So right now, I am conscious. <laughs> <laughs> now, here it is on the 9th of April. It happened in the ninth in, in April month. On the 9th of April. You see a tattoo on the girl, on the good lady's back. And you venture to take your... I mean, you're a married man. Anika Gums is not your wife. She's not your sister. She's not your daughter. She's of no relationship or outside woman. Let me put it in a ring. She's not even the outside woman. But you venture to touch her on her back that has a tattoo called a butterfly. And you so interested in the tattoo, you want to know what, what is the meaning of that tattoo? You're the leader of the opposition that wants to be the next prime minister. And you are concerned about a butterfly tattoo? Nah, that ain't making sense at all. That ain't making sense at all. There's a lot in this thing here that not making, that when I say not make, making sense, but I've been left out. But let me go on now. The item number three, because I itemize it, I'm only applying forensic analysis. Here it is. On another occasion, as he walked me to the front of his home, a bee landed on my dress. Well, I could understand that. No man ain't gonna see a bee, and then them bee might want to sting, and especially when them big black bees. You want to brush it across. But it's a statement that accompany the brushing off of the bee. In the honeybee landing on you. 
that is a seductive statement. Even the honeybee landing on you. Then at another occasion, at another occasion, Imam, item number four, you are looking rosy. No, but how this thing only happening all the time? I'm trying to understand this. How it is these kind of statements are being made all the time, Barry Garcia. You're looking rosy. You want to be the next prime minister? Well, I feel to tell you, uh, Imam, it best you become a Muslim. It best you become a Muslim. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this but, thing. But to become a Muslim gladiator. Nobody is not a Muslim. But because, well, even say if you want to apply Muslim logic to his conduct, there it must is inappropriate. There must be discipline in it, and he has to marry, and he cannot be fraternizing with women who is not his wife. Oh, he cannot. Oh, so wait now. So even though so he is a Muslim and he has four wives, they so are legally your wives. So the the, the question of touching no, it doesn't apply. No, but a person told me that. Uh, and in Muslim philosophy, and in Mus Islamic teachings, man and woman do not even communicate by shaking hands. Mm. You have to stay away from that. But he's not be touching them. Well, 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 you have well, to even lower. You have to even lower your sight when a woman is in the presence of you. You cannot be found lusting on women. So therefore, so so what about being bare back? What about being bare back? Highly inappropriate. Highly inappropriate. No, no. You, wait, wait, let, let you, and you're not even applying Islamic logic here. You're applying the logic of respect for yourself as a man. So, and decency because that is not your wife. Right? It mm. is highly appropriate for someone to visit your house. Yes. Your wife is not there. A female person, the office that you hold, well, I even bother with the office, but you'll be a back. You have no respect for yourself? From the, from, from the beginning to the end? From the beginning to the end? You have felt that at, at, at one point in time that this is not the way that I should go. Seeing that I'm presenting myself to be the alternative to Kamala Pasad Bissessa, that I have to show some sort of Barry, to the office. I let, let's see if we could squeeze in some calls here. Let's see if we could squeeze in calls. No, I don't want the imam to get involved with this thing at all. <laughs> you gotta stay out of this thing. You gotta stay out of this thing. Abu Bakr, Abu all the mistakes, all the Bakr, 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 3860. Let's head to the lines and hear what the people have to say here. Good evening, caller. Good evening, gladiator. Hey, long circle. How are you going, man? Good evening to Barry. By, by long circle, we are trying to apply some forensic analysis in this letter here. Yes. Help us out. Well, gladiator, from the tone of Mr. Um, Dr. Rowley's conversation and his actions, it was just very clear to me that he invited Ms. Gomes here not for an interview, but for intercourse. Thank you, buddy. Oh, my God. I find that word too. It's too harsh. It's too harsh. Good evening, caller. Good evening, caller. Gladiator. Yeah. When a person accustomed with young flesh, they will not let go to go for old flesh, boy. Oh, God. always want young meat to eat. Good evening, caller. Like man. I'm going to say, Barry, mm -hmm. you're looking, you are looking rosy. You want to be the bodyguard next to the bedroom? <laughs> Die with Newston and Kevin Costner? Yeah? Die with Newston and Kevin Costner? And you're, <laughs> you're touching the lady on her back because you see a, a butterfly? A tattoo. Uh, How inappropriate can you get? Now tell me this. Well, what is this? And then on top of it, what amazes me is his reply to Anika Gums' statement here. He's saying that is a well-crafted and well-worded letter 
That is, lawyers cannot find loopholes in it. It is not time. well crafted at all. The lady is giving living testimony. It's not a question of well crafted. Don't let that kind of. I mean, because your children are still trying to say that the lady's lying. She's he not lying. lying. I'm saying what is he is saying. Well, the mere reason that his attorneys cannot sue Anika Gums is because she's not it's lying. A it's a statement of fact. It's a statement of fact because when you engage in defamatory publication, because this is a publication here. Yeah. Because it was also published in the newspaper. Precisely. The mere reason that she's typing up, it is no longer slander. It is in permanent form. So it's a defamatory publication. And the mere reason that Dr. Keith Rowley is attorney, because when you have your attorneys, you have to tell them the truth if you want them to protect you. And those attorneys will talk to Rowley and say, did this day ever occurred? Occurred. The 21st of April, did it ever happen? Will you bear back on that occasion? And you have to answer. Okay. If it is that he was not bear back, he said, no. Did you touch her? If he did not touch her, he have to say no. But you see, Anika Gums is a smart person. Yeah, remember she's an investigative journalist. And it's obvious she would have a tape recorder on her. And that is the problem the attorneys are worried and concerned about. Because if it is the venture to challenge Anika Gums on this letter here, there are more things that would be revealed. And that is why I keep asking the question, Gladiator. If this document, document and this publication of this document was not the truth, why would the Express then print it or make it public knowingly well that, that they can be sued for millions of dollars and put the good name of the company and the good reputation of the company into disrepute. But yeah, they, why would the express print? But, but she's a wise woman because look what she left on the, on the last page of the, le of the letter. And that makes this thing much more deeper. Hear what she said coming on to the ending. This girl is a clever woman. She said developments over the last 72 hours have caused me great distress. Full now, what happened? What are the developments, developments that could cause you such great distress? That happened over the last 72 hours. Hmm. And why would they express again? And the express has not come out and say, well, look, this is the position, this is not the position. Why would the express, knowing that it's a reputable company, Did international something? company, print this document, public this document, if they know this incident never took place? Did something happen? I mean, is it, Imam? The lady is saying developments over the last 72 hours have caused me great distress. What it is that could have have that could have caused her over the last 72 hours. In other words, then something took place that caused her to say, "Now, nah, this is it. Is enough? Is enough? I can't take it. No, 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 no. no. This is going too far." You see that last part of the letter? It's troubling. She has not tell us the truth. Imam. She has not gone into depths of what really took no, place. No, but no, no. This part here seems to be books, volumes of pages. Because she's speaking about developments over the last 72 hours and she remained silent. She did not elaborate, Imam. What are the developments that took place over the last 72 oh, hours? My and God. she is saying that this... Developments that took place over the last 72 hours have caused me great distress. Gladdy, forgive me for being a little slow on this. But you see that last part there? I'm now beginning to understand where you're going with this. And that is cause for concern. Those last 72 hours. What could have happened in the last 72 hours for her to make this move? And that is serious cause for concern. Because she ended the letter by making that statement. X. That is serious cause for concern, Gladiator. Lord have mercy. It is 8 o'clock, people. And let me thank all our listening audience for tuning in to the great program, the number one program. Until tomorrow, Barry Garcia. We are out of here.